Dan Omen, Matt Bernie are getting set to kick off the late pick four at Presque Isle Downs on Thursday with race number seven, the $100,000 HPBA stakes. It's one of two stakes on the card. Bet the card, bet the pick four with a DRF Bets account. 300% deposit matches yours. Bets.drf.com is where you need to go for all of the information. Here's the field of fillies and mares getting set to go in the HPBA stakes. And a lot really depends on whether the eight rose tree, your five to two morning line favorite, runs here or at parks on dirt on Saturday. She's capable on both surfaces. And I like the way she won at parks and an off the turf race last time out coming from out of it. Yeah, she's just in good form, and I know she's only run twice since December of last year, but they were both winning efforts, and like you say, they were on a wet main track at Parks. They were on this Presque Isle Downs sort of main track, the only track at Presque Isle. She's really done nothing wrong in each one of those, and she's really done nothing wrong in her entire career. I just, it really it boils down to, for me, a value standpoint. Is she worth five to two in a race like this? I understand she's done really nothing wrong, but at the same time, I feel like you can have some interesting alternatives as opposed to a two and a half to one shot that may or may not really want to go here. Trainer Mark Cassie has a couple in here coming down from Woodbine. We'll begin with the three, My Arch Enemy, who just missed last time out, and that's kind of been her in her last few races. She's been knocking on the door. I was a little disappointed she didn't punch it in the Bell Mahone, considering she kind of controlled a moderate pace. But at the end of the day, she's just not as good as Gamble's Ghost, and she's got to be happy to get away from Gamble's Ghost. That horse is beaten in her last three races. My Arch Enemy, I don't think necessarily needs the lead to be successful. And that might be key because this pace could get hot. Yeah, and really, I mean, that's kind of going back to Rose Tree, where I'm saying, do you really want two and a half to one on a horse like that when I can have my arch enemy, if you believe the morning line, at four to one, where she has a number of figures that are faster than anything Rose Tree has ever earned? And look, I'm not going to hold it against her that she's run into Gamble's Ghost each of the past three starts. Gamble's Ghost is one of the best older horses up there in uh, Canada. So I feel like getting back to a situation like this, where, like you say, she doesn't have to have the lead in order to be effective, I think my arch enemy is a major player in here. Can you make a case for the other Cassie, the seven Giada Vegas, who returned from a lengthy layoff in that Bell Mahone? There wasn't a lot of pace on, and she just didn't fire. Now she has that race under her belt, and she has turf races at the fairgrounds. That's certainly fast enough to win this. Yeah, that's really sort of the hang-up for me, though. I, I think she, I know she's three for four on synthetic, but I think from a speed figure standpoint, she is significantly better when she is on the turf, particularly that turf down at the fairgrounds in New Orleans. I, I suppose she has a puncher's chance in a race like this, and she's going to be a big, big price. I just still prefer her on turf. Synthetic and route debut for the number 10, Renaissance Rosie, after 23 lifetime starts. I mean, she's had a really nice career. She's won 14 times. She has big speed, however, but this barn has done well moving from dirt to synthetic. As we see from this formulator fact, 36% winners, a 343 ROI. Renaissance Rosie, Kind of the buyers are stuck in that mid-70s on dirt. She might have to jump up a little bit, especially if this time form U.S. pace projector is correct. We know Renaissance Rosie is going to go. And in a big field, we would expect a fast pace. And as we see, that red bar it could work against Renaissance Rosie. Yeah, and I guess the, the sort of the thing for me here, too, is, again, maybe I'm just putting too much stock in the morning line, but when I look and see 9-2 to two with a horse that has not registered an 80 or greater in nearly a calendar year trying a surface for the first time, it's just a part of me that looks at it and says, I, I don't know that I'm seeing any kind of value here. I would want something much closer to 10 to 1 before I was enticed to take a shot with a horse like this. The horse sitting third on your time form U.S. pace projector could easily be a part of the fractions. And that's the two Burma Road, another one trying synthetic for the first time. She was up and on the pace at Kentucky Downs last time out. That race has come back key. A couple of winners, the ninth finisher coming back to win at Remington Park with an 86 buyer. Burma Rhodes at least run a number of fast races throughout her career. Even recently, over the summer, she had run a couple of mid-80 buyers. Now, again, you got to try something for the first time that's never easy, but she has a little bit of ability, a little bit of speed. I think I would be much more inclined to take a shot with a horse like this as opposed to the outside runner. Another Philly trying synthetic for the first time is the number five, My Sister Sledge. And trainer Michael Trombetta has a fantastic record with these kind of horses. Over the past four years, older horses moving from turf to synthetic, he is 11 for 27, 19 on the board with a 328 ROI. And this horse's turf form is good. 
Yeah, I've always been a fan of My Sister Sledge, and who knows if she'll be able to hand, handle the synth or not. And I, I got to be honest with you, I, I still don't know exactly what her best distance is. I don't know if she's better at a mile or she's better as sort of that closing sprinter, but that Jamila that she's exiting, that's come back very live. You've had three next out winners in there, albeit on different surfaces, predominantly on the dirt. I just think that the form of that race is holding up. If she ends up coming here and runs in a spot like this and can handle the synth, I think she's interesting. I think the six was a little short for her last time out. I think this middle distance, this mile and 70, mile and a 16th is best for her. We saw that two starts back on the turf at Laurel when she won a 2X. Crab Cakes, who finished just ahead of her in the Jamil, is one of the really nice sprinters in the Mid-Atlantic area, whether it's dirt or turf. She came back to win her next start with an 87 buyer speed figure. I want to talk a little bit about the one not taken because I wonder if she's a bit dirtied up at 20 to one on the morning line. You look at her last race she caught yielding ground in the all along she was 64 to 1 she probably was overmatched two starts back dirt I don't think that's her uh, game and she was 60 to 1 in that race three starts back mile and a half probably too far for her four starts back she's running against uni in 55 just two better fillies five starts back you've got dirt now I know we're really getting into the weeds here Matt but if you somehow can draw a line through all five of those races you're left with a 96 buyer effort on the turf yeah no look I mean I, I think you have to look at horses like this especially when you see they're 20 to 1 if you want to try to make a case for a horse like that you've got to look at it and say you know what I've got excuses for each of these past four or five my only concern is Whenever I see trainer changes, it makes me wonder if maybe they were holding form with a certain barn as opposed to other ones. And you'll note that she went through Pletcher's barn. She didn't really hold her form. And now that she's here with O'Dwyer, I'm just not totally convinced that she is what she was when she was with John Terranova. I have to use the nine lift up in some shape or form. <laughs> I'm not sure she's going to be eight to one, but after she won that Miss Liberty stakes on the turf, I was really excited about her chances. And maybe she was overmatched against Elysia's World and Dream a While, two Chad Brown runners in the grade three matchmaker. And maybe she didn't care for the yielding turf last time out. Now, I still think turf is her game. I'm not sure synthetic is her game, but she's going to get the right pace set up. And she just seems to fit this class level like a glove. Again, I don't think we get the eight, but I got to use her in any kind of multis, including this pick four. Yeah, and you know, the thing for me, too, when I look at her, I go back to that run at Woodbine last year over the synth in the La Lorgnette, and I feel like she was too close to the pace that day. I think her running style is best a little bit farther off of it, sort of three or four back, as opposed to up there pressing it. And I think that's part of the reason she faded the way that she did. I'm not totally convinced, like you had said, that this is going to be as good or better than she is on turf, but boy, with the form and the company that she's been keeping, she fits in here really well. Flower Fashion, the 12, ships down for trainer Christophe Clement. This horse has shown big speed going longer distances on the turf. Not sure she's going to be able to clear off and get the lead in here with a filly like Renaissance Rosie to her inside, but it's interesting to note that in this filly's career debut way back last year in France on a synthetic surface, she aired. Yeah, she did it at a mile and three sixteenths. I suppose that's part of my concern. I'm not totally convinced that this distance is going to be great for her. I think she's done her best when she goes a little bit longer. And as far as her stateside form is concerned, it's not terrible. But at the same time, the only victory was when she opened up over a yielding turf course by 11 lengths at Belmont two starts back, and she wired the field barely. There's just a part of me that looks at her and says, I, I would probably need every bit of that 10 to 1 to be enticed. We talked about the one not taken being a little bit dirtied up. How about the 11 lore netted an even bigger morning line of 30 to 1? I mean, last time out was her first start in something like 10 months. Uh, she didn't get any pace to run at. Just take a look at those fractions, 25 and 2, 50 and 1. The runner-up of that race came back to earn a 74 buyer. This horse was good enough to win a stakes on the turf at a mile and a 16 three back, has proven synthetic form, and is going out for a high percentage trainer. I mean, I would not be stunned if this 30 to 1 shot happens to pull this off. No, I agree 100%. She had every reason to need that most recent start, especially when you look and see the way the race was run. There was just no pace for her to run at that day off of such a long layoff. And then you go to the runs prior to that goal of COVID. They're all competitive. I think she fits in here at a big, big price. If you're playing any sort of an exotic, I think you have to consider her. I'm just going to draw a line through the number six adverts most recent run. It was an off the turf race at five furlongs, and that is just not her game at all. She is better at middle distances. She is a stakes winner at Presque Isle Downs. 
Uh, listen, this barn uh, sent out uh, a runner named Imply, who was second in this race last year, using the dirt to synthetic move. And it's been a successful move for this barn, as we see from this formulator fact. 27% winners, 458 ROI for Advert. Maybe she has to run the fastest race of her career, but she beat Rose Tree in that stakes race way back in August of 2017. Yeah, you know, I kind of look at it and say the fact that she's won at Presque Isle already, I don't think the distance is going to be an issue for her. And I agree, draw a line through that race that was off the turf on a wet main track going 5 eighths most recently. I think, again, you've got a lot of interesting, and that was kind of going back to the favorite talk, what I brought up at the top. I, at 5-2, to two, I just don't know that I need a favorite when I can have an interesting horse like Advert, or I can have other interesting 20 or 30 to 1 shots. Completing the field's another interesting 20 to 1 shot. That's Tulsa Queen dropping out of the Presque Isle Masters. In fact, she's been in grade two company two out of her last three races. Now we're getting blinkers on. The distance for me is a little bit of a question mark here for this filly, but she ran well with blinkers at Woodbine last fall, third in that stakes race behind Sister Notion, who came back to run third in the grade two Best Arabian with an 83. Yeah, to be honest, I think she's probably better going one turn. Yeah. I kind of feel like the distance is probably pushing it a little bit. She did run respectably in a stakes race, a, a state bred stakes race here in August of last year. But at the same time, I just kind of look at it and wonder if maybe we're pushing it from a distance standpoint. Wide open edition of the HBPA at Presque Isle Downs on Thursday, kicking off the late pick four. Let's take a look at our top selections for this race. Malik's My Sister Sledge. And again, that's a very powerful formulator fact. She's coming out of a live race and she's getting back to a distance where she should be comfortable. Plus, she should get a good pace set up. If you get that 6-1, to one, I think that's really fair. Yeah, I agree 100%. I kind of look at her and say, I think she's better than what the paper would indicate or suggest. I think she is more talented than that. Comes out of that very live stakes race at Laurel. But again, it, it's one of those instances where I, I couldn't go too much shorter than that 6-1 to one because I feel like this is a race that is just primed for a, for a nice opportunity to not settle for a short, short price. My arch enemy is 4-1 to one on the morning line, and maybe that's just a little bit too short considering this pace scenario. But I'm hoping Gary Boulanger breaks and lets the two Burma Road go, the 10 Renaissance Renaissance Rosie, and if anyone else wants to go, fine. I'd like to have her sitting in fourth to try to get the jump on horses like my sister Sledge turning into the stretch. She's my top pick. I think Tulsa Queen might be able to come around for a piece, as she did in that Ruling Angel stakes last year with Blinkers. Blinkers on for a pretty good barn. She'll be my sort of price play in here, and I got to use that a lift up in the pick four. I've been chasing her for a long time, but I'll take my arch enemy from just off the pace in the HBPA. Bet it with a DRF Bets account. It's easy, 300% deposit match is a great deal. Sign up at bets.drf.com and approximate post time for the HBPA 755 Eastern on Thursday night. Good luck.